picture of the world. And they never just God bless you and praise you. And they never just step away from you. Thank you for all the blessings that you have given. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. And they ask you to take it with a full heart.
Good morning, my church family and friends. Good morning. Good morning. Today's announcement. We would like to welcome our guests and members to our service today, and we hope that you will worship with us again. Every Wednesday, our prayer service is at 6 p.m. and Bible study at 6.30 p.m. Please join in person or on the call line. There is power in prayer. Yeah. Amen. You can do Sunday worship, service, and Bible study on our Facebook page, Metropolitan Baptist Church of Detroit, and YouTube page at NBC Detroit. <coughs> Next, we have our June birthdays. If you're in the sanctuary this morning, if you would, when your name is called, if you would please stand. Mary Douglas. Amen. Isaac Allen. Amen. Celeste Black. Amen. Willie Jones. Amen. Gloria Jackson. Amen. Luana Watts. Amen. Daniel Jones. Amen. And Julaine Willis. Amen. Amen. take my voice right now. But I have a lot to be thankful for because as the saints of old used to say way back in the day, God will keep you even when you cannot keep yourself. That he will protect you from danger seen and unseen. Because somebody in here ought to be grateful that God knows our particular name. The scripture says that we overcome the evil one by the blood of the by the words of our testimony. Yeah. 
and I can truly hold this microphone in my hand right now and let you know, Maddie Thompson, that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I simply do not know where I would be. Because it couldn't be me right here, saints of God, this upcoming week in a casket dead, saints of God. But God saw fit that none of those things would be. Because unbeknownst to me on Wednesday, saints of God, when I was going to pick up my son from King High School from basketball practice, I indeed backed up my car because I didn't sit well that my church door was open and I didn't want any of my members to be harmed. And when I got back to the street the second time, I said, oh my Lord, I thought my tire popped and bust again because I heard a loud pop. And that's the noise to me, saints of God. It was just a shooting around the corner. Yeah. And when I got to Buena Vista and 12th Street, I saw a car indeed zoom down that one-way street going around the corner. I thought it was a fool. I was going to say something, but I held my peace, saints yeah. of God. And it was not until Thursday. I didn't know all of this was going on until after Bible study. And I went to see 75 and I was wondering why all the news trucks were indeed outside. I was wondering why the police tape was outside. And indeed, I read the story on the next day. And I saw the car that was indeed involved was indeed the car that went down that one-way street. And I thank God that I held my particular peace. Because somebody in here knows that God is good at all the time. God is good. So I ask that if you are standing in the need of prayer, that you will come to this altar because we truly have a lot to thank God for. Because I know I'm not the only one who has a testimony that God is good even on a bad day. He has given his angels charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. And it's a beautiful thing to see a grandmother, Sister Lucas, bringing her grandchildren down to the altar. Because God wants us to come boldly to the throne of grace so that we can find help during our time of trouble. Pray for me, saints of God, that I will be able to preach during the preaching moment. Pray, saints of God, for a friend of Sister Latif, Elliot Bradley, who at 58 years old went on to be with the Lord. Rejoice, saints of God, that I don't have anybody in the hospital at the Metropolitan Baptist Church. Rejoice that even though there's some people on the sick and sudden list, that indeed Maddie Thompson, who's going through two surgeries, several surgeries, is not in the Father, if you're willing for your grace and you, we would know 
where we would be right now. But I know where I would be at the bottom of this cross is from a mighty, mighty, mighty long way. Yeah. We brought half of us that we brought from the places that we used to be, yeah. but we don't do right. it.
just meditate on that for a minute, saints of God. And you ought to make it personal. That great is your faithfulness, Lord, unto me. I heard somebody say that there is no lack when you lean on the Lord. When you trust in God and believe in Him and not your own understanding. He will direct your path. And he will give you strength like no other that reaches down to us. Sing it, church. <clears throat> when? Sing that love song like you're talking to your boo. Sing the song like you're talking to the one who woke you up this morning, who started you on your way. Scripture, but as long as it says B I B L E, that is the book for me. And you can decipher the difference during your quiet and devotion time tonight at home. It says in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 11 Put on the full armor of God to protect yourselves from the devil and his evil schemes. Put the spiritual spotlight on that one verse again. It says, put on the full armor of God to protect yourselves from the devil and his evil schemes. Yeah. 
As you go to your seat, why don't you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. I see you looking pretty cool today. <laughs> but today, I want you to know I'm ready to look the wrong way. Okay. Hang that up right. on the line of your mind and let the Holy Ghost blow on it. I'm ready to rip the runway. My brothers and my sisters, even though I do not have any volume to my voice this afternoon, I am here on divine assignment to simply let you know today that as a stylist and a creator, God can surely sovereignly get us all together and straight within seconds so that we can all subsequently turn around and go out into the world and walk in everything that God has purposed and ordained for our lives even though we have to go through many roadblocks and traps that the adversary will undoubtedly send our way just yeah. like now to stop us from progressing in the things of God. Yeah. Because just like we have been studying in the Bible study series recently from the book of Ephesians, God wants us all to certainly imitate his son, Jesus Christ, and be able to stand against the one who is wholeheartedly trying to take us up on out of here with his trickery and schemes every chance he gets. For the devil is definitely like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and bring down wicked thinking with teeth. Yeah. But church, he is absolutely after you for no other reason each and every day of your life but to kill you to steal from you and destroy you outright. For he doesn't want to see you advancing in the things of God, fulfilling your duties, nor celebrating the goodness of God by any means and crying out to him as we have just sung in today's song over and over again because God just keeps on blessing us. That's why we have to indeed put it on repeat. Great is thy faithfulness unto me. For is there anybody in here today who can wave their hands and talk back to me and say that morning by morning the mercies I see and all that I ever need the Lord's hand has provided. But the devil knows himself that if your life is, of course, in total agreement, in alignment with the anointed one, Jesus Christ himself, and you're, of course, strong in the Lord, in the power of his might, as Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 10 clearly says, you're going to undoubtedly trustee watch be a force to be reckoned with and the devil's days are going to definitely be numbered since you're surely ready to step out and show out for the God of your salvation and rip the one way like him because God's equipment was that of no ordinary warrior Deanna seeing that he himself strapped on righteousness as his breastplate and put on the helmet of salvation himself to keep from losing his mind when the trials and the tribulations of life came his way as the son of God because Jesus Christ himself said that in this life you shall have trials and tribulations but be of good courage I have already overcome and if you think that I'm making this up, it says in Isaiah 59 and verse number 17 that God struck himself up with the breastplate of righteousness and put on the helmet of salvation because he didn't want anything to get into his mind 
outside of the will, the way, and the word of God. Because somebody who's been through a dark situation in their life before can stand up and say, saints of God, that his word will be a light unto your feet and a lamp unto your path. And you may be going through hardships, but saints of God, if you just trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him, God will direct your path. Touch your neighbor and tell I'm ready to rip the runway because God wants me to know that my future is indeed as bright as the promise. This is no God. Yes, Metropolitan. God put on judgment like an overcoat and threw a cloak of passion across his shoulders to show the world firsthand that he means business when anyone or anything steps to his children the wrong way. For remember, it was. God himself, who personally promised us in Isaiah chapter 54 and verse number 17, Dick and Stovall, that no weapon that is formed against us shall ever be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises against us in judgment, thou shalt condemn, because this is the inheritance of the servants of the Lord. He just sitting up here wondering why didn't Pastor Jones just call one of his friends? Or why didn't Pastor Jones just ask one of his sons to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ? Because I knew that I, even though I may not have a little throat and a little voice, I gotta let everything that have breath yeah. praise the Lord. Preach. In short, that is why as a child of God, I'm encouraging you today from the sixth chapter of the book of Ephesians to get yourself in alignment with God yes, and in the right position against your adversary, the devil, by putting on the full, not the partial, armor of God. Yes. Because on yesterday, I was indeed in line to get my hair cut at my barber shop. And I rushed out of the house because I had to take my son to basketball practice, but I did not want to miss my appointment. And just like one of my members who said that her dress fell down on last week, my pants, my shorts were about to fall down because I did not put on a belt that particular day. Yeah. And that I'll let you know that in the regular world, you can't half step when it comes to your particular garments. You gotta have on the breastplate of righteousness and the belt of truth, which is the word of God to you. Because the adversary wants to get you to slip and fall and forget about it what God has laid out into your life. I'm trying to help somebody in this sanctuary today because you got to have on the full and not the partial armor of God without delay. <clears throat> because one thing is for sure, Dad, if you indeed want to come out of your adversity, with an all-out victory dash and shout, saying that this is the Lord's doing, and it is simply marvelous in our eyes. You got to number one, act like Jesus. Yeah. You got to number two, live like Jesus. <laughs> you got to number three, get dressed up like Jesus. Uh -huh. And finally, give him all that you got. Yeah. Because that is in whom your deliverance definitely derives. And in whom you can depend on all day and every day, even when the storms of life are raging. Yeah, yeah. When one views the Apostle Paul's epistle to the church 
at Ephesus underneath particular context in Leeds. Now you can see why the Apostle Paul was so adamant about getting the people of God to the divine dressing room that God desired for them to be in, to get in uniform, and to get in lock and step with the God of their salvation. And be properly prepared for the upcoming spiritual warfare that was undoubtedly coming their way. Yeah, yeah. Both left and right, and every which way but loose. But the truth of the matter is, the adversary does not want to see you moving forward in your faith walk with God by any means. While strangely, moreover, standing still and seeing the salvation of the Lord come to pass. Because the good news is that if you have on the full armor of God, uh -huh. you won't have to fight your battles in any shape, form, or fashion. Because God will tap you in your shoulder and say, move out of the way. I got this. Because you're my child and you're covered by my name. Because he knows himself that God's got his mind. It will never put more on you than you can bear. No. Because there is no temptation that is common to man that God has not already prepared a way of escape for you. For Petropolitan, God knows how to put the enemy in check on the spot. For we do not, according to Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 12, wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this present age, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah. But even with all of that, guess what? The good news is that God still knows our name. Yeah. And we are not forsaken, yeah. and we are not forgotten by any means. Because as my mother Petty, Deaconess Petty, as a 103-year-old, can tell you right here and right now, therefore you might as well go ahead and talk back to me, Deacon Petty. You can say for yourself that you've been young and now you're old, but you never see the righteous forsake nor the seed that in you. Oh yes, Metropolitan. The Apostle Paul spiritually knew the devil undoubtedly has some show of tricks and schemes up his sleeve. Therefore, all they had to do was get suited and booted in him before he caught them slipping and sliding in their faith away from God's holy word. And I do believe that even though I don't have any volume in my voice today. I do believe that that is irrelevant, a rhema in a right now word yeah. for somebody seated in the sanctuary today who the devil has been picking with and who the devil has been setting up roadblocks against every chance he gets to agitate you and to prevent you from walking in your God-given purpose. Because he knows that if you delight yourself in the Lord, God will give you the, the desires of your heart. Because the scripture says that no good thing will he ever withhold from those who walk upright. Yes, yes. No. Therefore, you better hurry up and listen to what the Apostle Paul is speaking into your spirit right here and right now through my feeble voice. Because if you don't put on every single piece of the full armor of God, you're surely going to get knocked down and leave yourself truly vulnerable for some more further attacks from the enemy. When you should be standing strong in him, and when you should be serving him with gladness, and when you should be shouting with the voice of triumph and shouting, with the voice of praise. Because you know for yourself, Metropolitan, 
that God knows what's coming your way. Therefore, he's got to get you properly prepared and dressed up for it so that you can face it by faith in him. Amen. That's why when God sovereignly invites you into his awesome presence, or should I simply say, Daniel, his closet and dressing room, to change your wardrobe and to subsequently lay his hands on you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, then you got to definitely leave out of there a totally different person than you came in, in Jesus' name. Yeah. For the Bible, the Word of God says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 17, that if any man be in Christ, they are a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Because God is certainly more than able and capable to give you beauty for your ashes, the oil of joy for your mourning, and the garment of praise for your spirit of heaviness. Because somebody in here knows that out of your wounds shall come worship, out of your pain shall come praise, and out of your tears shall come triumph, because weeping may indeed endure for a night, but joy singing and dancing will come in the morning light. For somebody in here knows that our strength is in the name of the Lord and nobody else. Therefore, we need to undoubtedly step out by faith looking like him every chance we get. For as one biblical writer said, and I quote, when we have on the whole we surely have the strength of God as our protection, unquote. Flat out. For somebody in here knows that Psalm 91 and verse number 1 says that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's why my first preaching point to you this afternoon is centered around the spiritual truth and reality. That if you are indeed ready to rip the runway like you proclaim you are, and steal the show for the God of your salvation, the one who rules, who reigns, and rewards those of us who diligently seek him, then you need to wake up and write it down. <laughs> Number one, alter your attire. And cover yourself up with his righteousness in the full armor of God. Let the church say, you must alter your attire and cover yourself up with his righteousness. Because as we will see later on in this series, saints of God, our righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. <laughs> and if you want to know the real translation to that filthy rag, what Isaiah is talking about, cut it to my office I don't want to say it over the airwaves. <laughs> but no, it's a gender sanitary napkin sense of God. That is what our righteousness is in the eyesight of God. Yeah. Yes, you got to get dressed up and let God alter your attire from both the top to the bottom yeah. so that you won't be left vulnerable and exposed in the valley and when the vicissitudes of life come, where the enemy is going to be hot on your trail and out to trample on you as he tries to slander not only your name, but slander the name of the God of your salvation. That's why I always admonish you pastorally to be sober and to be vigilant because the adversary, the devil, it's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, my friends. But my friends, if I be not a man of God, I do believe this afternoon that if you just get dressed up and dedicate yourself to fighting the good fight of faith in Jesus Christ, you will definitely be able to drive him back and straight out of your life through the power of God and the blood of Jesus. Because if there anybody in here 
here today who can answer the question for me that what can wash away our sins and what can make us whole again? Somebody in here needs to shout nothing but the blood of Jesus because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Seeing that once he takes a good look at you and what you got on, since you're dressed to kill, dressed to the knives, and you got the blood of Jesus all over you, he will see firsthand that you literally mean business when it comes to God. But beloved, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 12 and verse number 10, that we overcome the evil one through the blood of the Lamb yeah. and by the words of our testimony. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but spiritual for the pulling down of strongholds. Yes, and as a result of that fact, Metropolitan, God's word for somebody seated in this sanctuary today is you need to take and put on everything that the master has laid out for you, whether you like it or not. Because God knows what is best for your life. And God knows inevitably what's going to be coming your way and what you are going to face. Therefore, he wants you to face it, not on your own strength, but he wants you to be able to face it in the full armor of God and the strength of God. Because somebody in here knows that those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. Yeah. But trust me when I tell you, why don't you go ahead and nudge your name and tell him you got the hookup. You got the hookup. And you're a kept And you're a kept woman. Because God is surely able to keep you in the midst of it all. But the Bible says in Psalm 91 and verse number 11 that he has given his angels charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. Therefore, touch somebody and tell them which have shown us spiritual authority and boldness that this battle, this battle is not mine, Amen. but God says the Lord. Amen. For I don't care what the critics and the commentators say about what's going on in your life and what you're up against right here and right now. God told me to tell you that nothing it's too hard for God to handle. You know, when you hold on to his unchanging hand and let him have his own way in and through your life. In other words, God is on our side. In other words, God is Emmanuel. God is with us. Hence, greater is he that's within me than he that is in the world. Yes, we have the upper hand, my friends, and the edge over our enemies because God has already spoken a word of liberation over our life. Somebody in here needs to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, yes, go ahead and say it right here and right now because when you declare a thing, it shall be established and set up for your benefit. Oh yes, church, when you spiritually know that God has performed the necessary alterations on your life and has subsequently suited you up both from head to toe with his very best and got you out here looking fly, sometimes you got to say in complete confidence when you look at yourself in the mirror, I know I got it going on. And I know I'm surely precious in his sight. Yes. Because God has subsequently dressed me all up for spiritual warfare 
and got me out here looking good and dainty and looking more and more like him on a daily basis. Because the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 in verse number 5 that we are supposed to let this mind be in us. Yeah. That was also in Christ Jesus. Yes. Thus I know I'm about to blow up and see the mighty hand of God moving and working things out in my favor like never before. Because the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 13 that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Come on. For he surely has the strength like no other that reaches down to me when I'm going through hell, high water, hardships, and hard times. Thank you. So that I can spiritually turn around and holler out, hallelujah, anyhow. Yes. Because I know God is going to give me the power to prevail. Yeah. I know God is going to give me the upper hand. And I know that God is going to give me both the style and grace to go ahead and shut my enemies all the way down. <laughs> For if God be for me, the scripture says, who can be against me? Come on. Therefore, I got to show him what I'm working with by swinging my sword every which way but loose right. and ripping the runway through the power of God. Yeah. Because I know all eyes are surely going to be on me and that God's got my back and that he will be my defender he will be my director he will be my God as well as my God for my grandmama used to say can't nobody do me like Jesus and can't nobody do me like the Lord that's why I can go ahead and give you my second preaching point. I know you're tired of my voice this afternoon, but bear with me. Because I don't mean to beat around the bush by any means. Because God would have you to know right about now that when you indeed have on the right attire and you're dressed up in a matching ensemble with the eternal one, God himself, Meaning that your attitude and your actions are aligned with the anointed one. You can surely get ready to rip the one way, number two, and represent him. Because your actions of getting all dressed up in and of itself will show God all right that you're certainly ready for him. Wake up and write it down. Hmm. To absolutely annihilate all adversaries, negative agendas, attacks, and assaults against you. Because God has promised in his holy word, in Romans chapter 8 and verse number 28, that all things will work together for the good of them who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. And I do believe that that is God's word for somebody in the Metropolitan Baptist Church right here and right now. Because God is saying that to you. You should stop fighting one another and you should stop fighting God and instead you should let God have his own way in and through your life because you ought to be saving your energy so that you can go toe to toe with the adversary. They tell the adversary that you can't make me doubt him because I know too much about him. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I need you to stop what you're doing right yeah. about now and shout, shut him down, Lord. Shut them down. Shut them down. down, Lord. Because God has surely given you the best possible material to march on and meet your enemy head on by faith. Therefore, I want you to know, my friends, that victory shall be yours. For God has graciously extended to you, hear me today. A sword, a shield, a helmet, a breastplate, and so much more. So that you can stand up and show the world firsthand that you're ready to take the world by storm for Jesus and the kingdom of God right here and right now. 
Because I know without question and without doubt that God surely got you out here looking so fresh and so clean. Because he's surely taken you somewhere in him that you have never been before. Yes, you have a date with destiny. Because God knows the thoughts and the plans that he has towards you are good and not evil. And he will take you to your expected end. Thus you got to truly stay plugged in to your power source, Metropolitan. Because if you don't get anything else, God wants you to know with new levels come new levels. Come yeah. on, you yeah. Say that again. No, yeah. 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 God wants you to know that with new levels come New devils. Right. Now Justice thinks that he's just a superstar basketball player. Right. But when I picked him up from the trip he took to Toledo to go and play with the King basketball team as an eighth grader, I said, how many points did you score? And he said, he tried to evade the question. <laughs> I said, Justice, how many Point did you score? Because normally he would indeed be boasting and bragging that Dad, I put up 24 points. I was unstoppable. I said, Justice, how many points did you score? I scored three points. I said, Justice, stop talking under your breath. He said, I only scored three to five points there. Because the coach told me the things that I could get away with back in middle school and junior high school, since I'm in a new level, I can't use those particular moves. Because God wants to do something new in and through my life. And somebody in here knows that you gotta get with the program and you gotta start giving God all that you got. Because He wants to use you as a demonstration of the Spirit's power. Therefore, you gotta be able to forget those things which are behind you and press towards the mark of the high calling that's with Christ Jesus. Because God wants you to know that when you are allowing him to order your steps, to teach you, to guide you, and to show you the way that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has in store for you. Therefore, you don't have to wait until the battle is over. So if you're in God, if God is in you, you can go ahead and shout right now. Hallelujah. Just tell me who can stand before us when we call on that name of Jesus. You got to put fear in the background. Come on. Because the Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear. No. But he's given us the spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. All fear is, is false expectations appearing real. But God wants you to allow him, Sister Lucas, to fill you with his power, yeah. to fill you with his strength, and to fill you with his faith. Because what is faith? Faith is when you say, I forsake all, Come on. and I trust in him. That was my word this morning as I got dressed. Because I've been drinking hot tea, I've been drinking Theraflu. I've been taking Mucinex. But I said I gotta press my way to the house of the Lord, nevertheless. Because I know I look good. I know I look fly. As a matter of fact, one of my members 
she must have wanted me to feel good because she said, Pastor, you're looking good today. And I can tell you're looking weight, losing weight. Wow. <laughs> I wanted to tell her, baby, I ain't lost the problem. <laughs> wow. But guess what? When you put on the full armor of God, yeah. looks can be deceived. Come on now. Because you know how feeble, how weak you are. Yeah. But in him you're strong. Come on. And because it is through him that you live. Yeah. It is through him that you move. Yeah. It is through him that you have no being. Because God is the very air that I breathe. Yeah. As we all rest on our feet, the doors of the church are open. If you're here today and you do not have a loving relationship with the God of your salvation, God says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Because God can do something for you that no other power can do. He can make you whole, and he can make you new again. And that's why it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 17 that if any man be in Christ, they are new creatures. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. The doors of the church are open.
ministry is now, and we know that the best is yet to come. Yeah. I thank God for them today because they gave me strength Amen. in the midst of my weakness. Right. Saints of God, before we take up the offering and the collection, I just want to give you a couple of pastoral emphasis notes. During the summer months of June, July, and August, we're going to have casual Sundays, Saints of God, casual dress Sundays throughout the summer. Wear your best and just be ready to rip the runway. Because we know that the temperatures are escalating and God is at work and believe me, we're not the only one suffering because on my secular job, indeed, the air conditioner went down and it was an air conditioner that was there even before we bought the campus. And indeed, saints of God, we've been suffering. Okay. But God will supply all of our needs. Amen. When the people of God get on the same page and tip. The scripture says in Ephesians chapter 3 yeah. and verse number 20. That God can do things in and through our lives. Yeah. Which are exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that working in us. Because God has promised to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And God will surprise you. One of my members came into my office today and said, all of my reserve is taken away. But he forgot that it's payday today. And he said, I got everything back. And I can testify that it's graduation season and during graduation season going to all of these open houses. Come on. I kind of need less people yes. as they achieve. And I used to say I need to give me a second job. Maybe I need to give me a third job. <laughs> I need to cut my service to 10, 15 minutes and everything of that nature. Because I believe in investing in people's futures. Yeah. Yeah. And I see that we put up electronically on our Facebook page the popcorn sale. Now, I'm a pastor that does not believe in fundraisers. But indeed, we want to make sure that we have a nice banquet facility for our 100th celebration. And the goal is $500. So I'm going to ask that you go onto that particular page and that you indeed buy some popcorn, invite Lottie, Dottie, and everybody, saints of God, to on that particular endeavor and watch God change things. Yeah. It says zero out of the 500, yeah. but I have a belief in you that before Tuesday strikes, we can get to that $500 yeah. mark. People come to me all the time saying, support yeah. my, you know, Suns football team, this and that. If you give, it shall be given back to you. Amen. Next week is Youth and Young Adult Day. I ask that you invite your grandchildren. I pray, Sister Lucas, that your grandchildren will be back next week. I love how you brought them to the altar. And I bless them with money today. I tell you, I'm just a giver because I know that they're taking care of business in the classroom. Amen. But Daniel and Justice Jones are going to be bringing the message. God is at work in their life, as you know. On the fourth Sunday at the New Bethel Baptist Church at 3.30, or with Little John and Messiah Baptist Church will indeed be licensing justice as a minister. Amen. And will indeed be no, licensing as a layman, right. as a layman and a minister. Amen. And God will bring increase. Yes. God will move mightily in the lives of his people. Yes. I gotta indeed find some people to work the camera on Wednesday. Me and Tony are gonna have to learn from justice because he has his eighth grade dinner dance on Wednesday. 
and then on the fourth Sunday he won't be here because he'll be preaching at New Grace in Highland Park for the wow. Youth Explosion, Saints of God. So I'm praying that God would not only increase our money, but he will send laborers in yeah. the vineyard, saints of God. Yeah. People who have a can-do attitude in the midst of a can-do atmosphere. So I ask that you invite your youth next week and invite, pass that flyer on about our Juneteenth, Jesus, and Father's Day celebration and jazz, where the number one priority will be lifting up the name of Jesus. But the Bible says in Matthew 6 and 33, that if you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, everything else will be added unto you. You got to be a faithful giver. You got to be a cheerful giver. Yeah. One of the outside individuals who has been sowing into this ministry on a weekly basis said her phone was compromised and she had to get rid of the Giftify app and all of the other different apps on her phone. But she said, Pastor, I don't want to miss giving my offering. So do you have Cash App? I said, I don't have Cash App, but my wife has Cash App. And she Cash App the money on last Sunday so that we can give it today, saints of God. Hallelujah. It's now giving time, saints of God. I ask that you give your best offering to the kingdom of God. Because God does not hold anything back from you. The ushers are going to come. It's giving time. Give me some good youth, giving music. Anything besides, I shall not be. <laughs> Let's put in that work and let's join teams and together. 
every day take out our kids. Yeah. If they want to show up a good time that they can believe, they can live, and they can surely testify. It's now communion time, saints of God. And normally during this time, our son will indeed be singing the Lord's Prayer, but he's under the weather as well. But we always want to reflect back on the cross of Calvary. Yeah. Yes. Because the scripture says he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace is upon him, and through his stripes we are healed. I know I'm going to have my voice back and be able to preach and teach with power on Wednesday because we're going to be looking at the grace of God. If somebody in here knows if it wasn't for the grace of God, where would I be? I'm grateful that God looked beyond my faults and saw my particular needs. As everyone to my right and served, as everyone to my left been served, everyone in the choir has been served. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he broke it, and said that this is my body, which shall be broken for you. And they all ate. In a like manner, he took the cup, deepness petty, which contained the fruit of the vine, and said that this is my blood, which shall be shed for you. He spoke these words as a 33-year-old man. His followers, his students, his disciples didn't understand what he was talking about. But unlike us, who were born to live, Jesus was born to die. And he said unto his father, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he went a little further and said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And they all drink. And they went out singing, God bless.